Hello, and thank you for uh, tuning in to this interview. I'm Melissa Gingrich. I'm a MRMTA teacher in Winnipeg, and I'm really delighted to be interviewing local composer Sid Rabinovich. Thank you so much for speaking to us. It's uh, really lovely to get to know you a little bit better. Thank you very much. Good to be here. How are you? I'm fine. I'm in good. I'm in pretty good health. That's good. <laughs> That's the As I thing. say, uh, people say, how are you bearing up under the, the uh, COVID situation? I, say, <laughs> I always say that my lifestyle is not that different now <laughs> from what yeah. it was before. You know, yeah. I, uh, I was pretty much of a homebody before, and I still am. Yeah, I can relate to that. It's not all bad. I, uh, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, you live in Winnipeg now, I understand. Did you grow up here? Oh, did I grow up? No, I actually grew up, I grew up in the big town of Brandon, Manitoba. I was born there, and I lived there until I was 13, and that's where I took my first piano lessons. So we were just discussing with Melissa the fact that I took uh, lessons at Brandon College in those days, and that was, there was just the one building, I think it's now the administration building at Brandon University, and uh, they had, they they actually did give arts degrees there, but they had a, quite an active music program, that's where I took my, my first piano lessons, and um, I uh, lived in Brandon until I was 13, and then our family moved into Winnipeg, and I was here. Uh, until uh, I went to high school here at the university, and then I, then I left. I went away to university in the States, and I lived in Toronto for many years. I lived in Toronto for about 17 years, and then I came back. I've been back here in Winnipeg quite okay. a few years. So you came back, and piano is your main instrument then? Did you study other things? Well, that, yeah. I played, I, I just played piano. I just played piano. Okay. That was it. I took piano lessons. That was it. Excellent. Well, I think it served you pretty well. Um, you're uh, well. <laughs> you're an accomplished uh, composer. Um, well, I, uh, I, 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 yes, I spent a lot of time in composition. I'm not much of a pianist, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come Remember, to uh, be a composer? At what point did you? Well, out? okay, um, I actually um, was in I was in academia for many. Years I taught in social sciences. I went. I did a, a doctorate actually in, in communications. And I taught at York University in social sciences, and then I decided that music was my true love, and I decided that and said that's what I want to do. And I started uh, writing things, and I studied. I had a uh, teacher at the conservatory in Toronto. I studied with his name was Samuel Dolan, and uh, that's uh, that's how it uh, came about. Uh, I was always uh, dabbling in music and playing things, and, uh, improvising, writing little ditties, piano ditties, and uh, the point in my life, I said that's that's what I would like to do. And that's where I've been for a long time. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder sometimes if composition. Um, can be partly a way to uh, share something that's a part of you, but also a way to explore something that's not not yet part of you. Would you agree with that? That is that is is absolutely true. Sharing, yes, you're of course you're sharing with other people if you're lucky enough to have other people who want <laughs> who want to have you share it with. But um, yes, in a way, it is. I agree that it is sort of an exploration. It's a way of finding out about yourself. Presumably, this material, this music material, is there. It's embedded in you, and uh, you look inward and you bring it out. So you're you're discovering. Yes, it is. It's sort of a uh, an introspective psychological process. I I agree with that. That's fabulous, and um, it's not limited to mature adults either, is it? Uh, we're interviewing some student composers this uh, Canada Music Week. Uh, ab absolutely, absolutely. And these young composers are looking within and finding these things 
within themselves. And uh, after they're out, you say, wow, I, I guess I did that. I guess it was there within me. This is, this is part of me. You're putting, uh, in, in a sense, you're putting your, your soul out there and you're mm -hmm. putting the deepest, innermost part of yourself, you're putting it out for other people to inspect and yeah. enjoy, hopefully. But, uh, but you, you are, that's right. And then the, the young composers, exactly the same thing. Yeah. It's exactly the same. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's excellent. Um, I was looking on your website, and uh, the list of compositions went on and on and on. You've written for orchestra, <laughs> choir, band, small ensemble, solo instrument. Um, and I noticed that dance and uh, world music are really strong themes, both of which I really enjoy. I wondered if we could talk just a little bit about one of your uh, works. Uh, I enjoy the album Sephirad. I wonder if you could give us some, some background on that. Hey, Sephirad is a, um, uh, it's really the, it's, it's a Hebrew word um, and it refers to, really to Spain and it's the word uh, just to go briefly into a little bit of history, um, the Jewish people, there are really two kinds of Jews. There's, there are the East European, the ones who come from East Europe, which I do, and that's where my family comes from, from Eastern Europe. And then the other, and those are called the Ashkenazic Jews. Okay. And that these, these are words that occur in the scriptures, in the Bible. And that has come, Ash, Ashkenaz was the term that came, came to designate Germany. Uh, that was the symbol of, the, of Europe. Mm -hmm. And Sepharad was the term that came to designate Spain. And though that, that term refers to Jews who came from the Middle East, originally from Spain, but then they left Spain back in 1492, you know, when Columbus mm -hmm. sailed the ocean blue, you know. Uh, there were there were quite a few actually. There were a lot of uh, Jews in Spain, and they left at that time. They were actually forced out. They had to get out, and they dispersed throughout the Middle East. They went to various Arab countries. They went to Morocco, to North Africa, and they went to the Balkans. They went to what is uh, now Yugoslavia and Bulgaria, and they went all the way to uh, Iraq and to Iran and all. Those parts of the Middle East. So the term, so Sephirad, after that long <laughs> introduction, the term Sephirad is is used to designate that group of Jews who are in in the Middle East. So the album, most most of the pieces have some sort of Middle Eastern connection. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them, uh, most of them actually have a Jewish connection too. So you put the two together, Middle Eastern and Jewish, and you come up. With Sephirah, so uh, there are very there are various pieces there. There's a uh, the setting of the uh, Song of Songs, you know, from the from the Bible. There's that. But all the pieces on that album have guitar. Every piece has guitar. That's sort of the featured instrument. There are other instruments as well, and there are vocal selections as well. But the guitar is sort of the main motif runs through all that, all those pieces, and that is, a, of course, is an instrument that you typically associate with Spain, and mm -hmm. also parts of the Middle East as well. So it, it, so the idea is that it's, it, it's, um, it's, uh, it's sort of exotic, it's Spanish, it has a Jewish connection, and that's why, that's what Sephirat has come to designate. I don't know if what your experience is. What was listening to? It. Did you did you feel that there was kind of some sort of an exotic uh, aspect to it? Yeah, for sure. I uh, yeah. I love world music, and it it transported me. I, I enjoyed the rhythm and the uh, modality, uh, the ensemble, the instrumentation, um, and each each movement um, just carried through really beautifully. I, I enjoy listening to it. Well, that's great. Well, you got yeah. you got the right feel. From it. That's what it's supposed to. Be. Thank you for uh, for putting it together. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I, I I did try to convey. I maybe I, I didn't really give much information in the notes. I don't. I guess. 
But I, uh, anyway, this uh, Sephar, Sephirod, I just think of that as referring to Spain. That's it. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. That's, that's helpful. Um, I have another question for you. Um, this one maybe thinks um, a little bit more about the Canada Music Week context and the uh, MRMTA uh, student uh, context uh, for our viewers here. Um, as a composer and instructor, how would you encourage students and teachers to expand their musical tastes, particularly into world contemporary or Canadian music? How would you encourage us to play Beethoven and Bach, but expand that palette? Well, uh, just uh, soak up whatever you can. I mean, there's so much now. I it, It's just astounding what there is. I go on YouTube and whatever you want to listen to, it's there. Mm -hmm. If you want to uh, uh, Vietnamese music, you can get it. If you want African music, whatever you want, it's there. And you can explore uh, all these different kinds of folk, folk music, as well as the classics. Are, the classics are all there as well. We know that. But that is one. I, I think the best best thing to do is just listen, listen and soak it up. And um, uh, I think a lot of the young people are doing that now. And there is, and there's, there are influences from all these different kinds of folk music in pop music as well. So, I mean, I, my background, um, uh, you know, I, I, I did go through the uh, piano, the, the system of uh, taking piano lessons and we did little, minuets by Mozart and Clementi and things like that, but I was most interested in the popular music of my day when I was mm -hmm. growing up. That's, that's, what, that's what had the most effect on me. So I would encourage people to do that, you know, just to open up to the, all the music that's going on around with the pop music and, also, and various folk music mm -hmm. too. And you can get so much nowadays. It's all there. I think uh, what you're saying is a testament that we can we can study the curriculum, but also explore and dabble in other things without watering down our experience. It actually uh, builds the experience and uh, creativity. Right. Uh, right. Um, and I think it would be it would be helpful if there were pieces if they could include pieces with with the folk connection. In them, in in the curriculum. I mean, I have one piece in this um, uh, event, which uh, is is sort of folk influences. That the Izmir piece, which uh, I think is going to be played, and uh, that that has a, a folk connection. Also, the other one that's that's in there, Sur le Pont d'Avignon, is a folk song. Mm -hmm. So these pieces are available, and they can be played by young students. And I don't know, I'm kind of out of touch with the piano repertoire for young people, but I would, I would suggest that teachers seek these out. They must, they do exist, I think, to some extent. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage teachers to include these within the repertoire, as well as, as, well as the, you know, the, the Bach and the Clementi and the Mozart and all the rest. But uh, for sure, and uh, I think I think young young stupid young piano students would appreciate them. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, uh, there uh, there is there's probably a fair bit of material out there. I don't know. You could you can fill me in. You tell me. Yeah, yeah it's true. It's true. Um, there are pieces of pretty much every genre for every level if you know where to look and if you make friends with your local bookstore and. And online print and whatnot too. And I, I know my students love to explore, to explore all the types. Uh, we we try to cover all the bases, and it's it's just a rich experience. But and it's not for certain levels; it's for every level. Well, I'm glad to hear that there is material out there because when I was growing up, there that didn't exist at all. But I, I think things have changed. It has, yeah. I think um, there's a desire, and the students don't hesitate to ask, "Can I please play this song?" Or I heard this on a movie. 
Can I please or, play this yeah, song? That's right. Yeah. So these are probably talking about pop pop tunes that they yeah. that they hear all the time. Yeah. That's right. So um, there's no reason not to do them. There's no reason to shy away from from those. Or at one time they I guess they were considered it wasn't considered to be high class high quality or high class music. But you know I I I, I don't think people take have that attitude anymore. I think we're learning that we're in the inspiration business. Um, students play well when they're inspired, and they uh, they create other inspirations out of that. And, uh, That's right. What do you? I'll ask, I'll ask you. I'll ask you a question. What what do your what do your students most uh, enjoy playing? What kind, What music? I get a lot of requests for movie pieces. Um, movie. Sometimes in, it's in like there. top forty radio stuff. Um, it's not too often that those pieces adapt well to piano. It's a lot of like B B B B B B B. It it doesn't adapt super well, but uh, well, I understand. But understand soundtrack stuff um, goes yeah. over really well, and that can be a pretty broad spectrum. Whether it's James Bond or Titanic or whatever, it's great. They yeah. love it. They they know the story behind the piece, and I just see them play with new passion. When they have that connection. That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I can say that that sort of uh, rings true for me because I did take piano lessons. We did the traditional repertoire, but I was more interested in the popular music of my day, and that's what I I played in my own. And then later on, I uh, took actually I I, I took uh, popular piano. There was a fellow <laughs> back in my day, way back who taught popular piano, and that's what I enjoyed. And then, later on, I came back. I said, well, this is great, and this is fine, but there's, I just wanted something more, and I came back more to what you would call classical music, and then into, then into the modern classical rep repertoire. I'm talking about Bartok and Stravinsky right. and Copeland and people like that. But I came back to it on my own. But I, I, I went the whole route. I went into popular music. That's mm -hmm. that was my music, and yeah. I that I, I I went up, and I, I think the same thing might happen nowadays. If you inspire uh, young 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 people by giving them the kind of music that they can relate to, they'll come back. And if they're really interested in music, they'll start exploring the classics on their own yeah. and realize what. What, what what they have to offer. Yeah, I agree. I, I totally agree because there's a richness there as well. It just might take some time to appreciate it. Sure. It's been fabulous to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. It's nice to uh, to see you and put a, put a face to the name. We really appreciate what you have to say. Well, thank you, Melissa. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Stay well. You too. Thank Bye -bye. you, Sid. Bye.